audience again. We call global audience. We are online. Yes. World Health Congress call global audience, and uh, we will start it with uh, our next uh, precious speaker. Paul Benheim from Australia, but I don't know exactly, Paul, if you are in Australia or you run around the world like you usually Hi. do. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I arrived today in Australia. Uh, it's very bad connection. Can we connect him again? I am here, my I just arrived in Australia. Wonderful. Then you can uh, uh, then you can talk about it, uh, what you do in the whole of, uh, around the world. We know that you are very very active in uh, Japan and uh, uh, wherever you come, uh, <laughs> have grow very fast and friend, have business grow very fast. So, Paul. World is your, and wor words are your. Take your time and uh, talk about your work, please. Okay. Well, my name is Paul. I began working with hemp more than 20 years ago. In the next slide, this is my first hemp food product that I created. It is, in fact, Europe's first commercial hemp food product and remains a best-selling snack food across Europe today. I hope you will see in the next slides because I cannot change them from here. Yeah. And the next one. Next slide, please. Although born in London, I've been working with hemp in Australia since 2000. My company, Hemp Foods Australia, was established this year and been producing hemp foods since 20... and has quickly become the largest hemp foods company in the Southern Hemisphere. Next slide, please. I now have factories around the world processing the highest quality hemp seeds, hemp oil and hemp protein. Next slide, please. Today, I would like to discuss the emergence of CBD, cannabidiol, and why I see it being the most critically important development in the hemp industry right now. For me, this began in early 2014, when I noticed conversations about hemp starting to change. What changed? Next slide, please. The customary jokes about getting stoned start disappearing from those conversations. Mainstream consumers were starting to take hemp very seriously. There were a number of hemp innovations this year. So, what will take notice? Next slide, please. You and I would surely be excited at the thought of living in a hemp house and driving a hemp car powered by a, next slide please, a hemp battery with products being made from hemp plastics and used in many creative ways while wearing hemp clothes with hemp waterproofing. But those things aren't what got con consumers talking about hemp. So what did? They learned that hemp may be the answer to the biggest and most urgent health problems. There has been a constant stream of news reports creating miraculous outcomes in a variety of health issues like pain, epilepsy, and cancer. And for children with epilepsy, getting access to the oil can literally be a matter of life and death. Please. Let's move to the CBD slide. So what is CBD? Is it safe? And if the stories are true, how could one substance be so profoundly beneficial? CBD stands for cannabidiol, which is one of the 500 chemicals found in hemp plant. It is a class of chemical called a cannabinoid. Approximately 100 of the chemicals found in hemp plants are cannabinoids. 
Unlike THC, the cannabis chemical people are most familiar with, CBD is not psychoactive, which means it does not get you high or stoned. You can consume large amounts of CBD and still drive a car, go to work, and function normally. This following video gives a summary of both chemicals. Please forward two slides to the video. Or two more, please. Okay. flight. Slide name after 500 chemicals. The next one along. Slide number 16. Live stream is offline. Okay, slide so, number 17. Yes. We will continue. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you could not see that video. It's something called the quantum button. Yes, no problem. The video you did not see mentioned something called the entourage effect, and that you need the, a whole plant if you want the best results. This partly answers the question of how CBD can, so, can do so much. Those hundreds of chemicals act as CBD's entourage, and together they have a synergistic effect. The result is that the therapeutic power of CBD is enhanced without the risk of any negative effects is minimized. Please go on to the next slide. Next. Sorry. And the next slide. The, the next slide says this is what the British Journal of Pharmacology says about CBD. The synergism of CBD to cannabis pharmacology and pain relief has been scientifically demonstrated. Cannabis compounds display unique therapeutic entourage effects. And from Sydney University, with all modes of administration, Pharmacological effects may be enhanced by synergies between constituents of cannabis not present in isolated or synthetic cannabinoid drugs. Let's take a simplified look at what cannabinoids do in your body in the next slide, including the only place a human can get cannabinoid. Next one. In the next slide, first of all, cannabinoids like CBD and THC both have very strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Next slide. And are very effective at penetrating the different tissues of the body, including the brain and the eyes. Okay, wait now. This is the important because the body is constantly under attack by the oxidative and inflammatory process that underlie all the major diseases. There are many other ways that CBD interact with the body to bring about balance. However, the real secret behind the seemingly miraculous benefit is the endocannabinoid system. You're going too fast now. <laughs> Can you go back two slides, please? You can just stay there until I ask the next slide. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
That's good. The endocannabinoid system. It is a system of nerve. The endocannabinoid system is a system of nerve and cell receptors throughout your body. They influence every system and process in the body. They give nerves the ability to send two-way communication, something that was previously thought to be impossible. These receptors are essential for maintaining proper function and balance. They are particularly important for recovery and repair. CBD's list of properties now expands and includes direct action against cancer and various infections. They are antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, anti-psychotic, anti-epilepsy, neuroprotective, cardioprotective, anti-cancer, anti-nausea, antibacterial, anti-diabetes, anti-arthritis, pain relief, both, and an immune modulator. Next slide, please. In a 2013 article in Cerebrum, Dr. Algen says the following about the endocannabinoid system. Next slide, please. It is one of the most important physiologic systems involved in establishing and maintaining human health. It is literally a bridge between body and mind. Next slide, please. It is important to note that the body can produce a limited number of its own cannabinoids. At least five of these endocannabinoids are A phytocannabinoid is one of the hundred cannabinoids coming from the Next slide, please. And here is where it gets really interesting. The body can only make cannabinoids and the receptors if it is constantly fed with the essential fatty acids, alpha linoleic and linoleic acid, omega-6, in a ratio of approximately one to four. And what is the only food in the world to provide these essential fats? Pre precisely this ratio. Yes, it is hemp. So based on what we are learning about the endocannabinoid system, it may well be that hemp is the single most important food for human health. The only other place we find cannabinoids is in breast milk. Mothers who are consuming enough essential fats produce milk full of cannabinoids. Go to the lab. Maybe with the baby now. There has been research conducted in Jamaica which suggests that mothers who consume cannabis phytocannabinoids produce healthier babies than mothers who do, do not. This big question, since eating cannabinoids is illegal in Australia, does that make breastfeeding a crime? I am saving that one for the next Australian TV interview. And what happens if your body doesn't make enough cannabinoids and you don't eat them in your diet? Next slide, please. In the 2004 research paper entitled Clinical Endocannabinoid Deficiency, Russo poses this logical question. If Alzheimer's disease is associated with deficiency of acetylcholine, Parkinson's disease with dopamine, and depression with serotonin, should the situation be any different for the endocannabinoid system whose receptor density is in fact far greater than many others? He goes on to discuss how endocannabinoid deficiency could explain difficult to treat conditions such as cancer, fibromyalgia, migraine, irritable bowel syndrome, and others. He ends the paper by stating, cannabis has become a therapeutic compass to what modern medicine fails to cure. Next slide, please. Dr. Bonnie Goldstein, a cannabis physician, highlights that when cells become stressed, Next slide, please. They cover their surface in cannabinoid receptors, hoping to receive some cannabinoids so that they may go back to a healthy state. What this means is the body knows which part of it is in the most trouble and where the cannabinoids are needed most. Next slide, please. In my new company, Elixinol, we have been supplying high CBD oil to people all over the world since early 2014. The stories we hear back from customers consuming the oil reminds us of the research that was just described by Dr. Goldstein. For example, after taking CBD oil for the first time, people with thyroid issues, issues report a strong sensation in their region of their thyroid. People with kidney problems feel it in their kidneys. People with lung problems feel it in their lungs. 
Next slide, please. And Elixinol, we came up with the saying, CBD is good for me. And I, and I, as I have mentioned, many customers have written to us to tell us why they believe CBD is good for them. female who has been healed from epilepsy. Next slide. Another 10 year old young lady from Australia with epilepsy. A 7 year old female from Australia with epilepsy. Please go to the slide with 1971 on it. 1971. Oh, Wright claims in the media that there is no research and trials are needed to determine if CBD could be a viable medicine for epileptics, a placebo-controlled, randomized, double-blind human trials have been conduct conducted as early as the 1970s. Medical World News reported cannabis is probably the most potent anti-epileptic known to medicine. According to the World Health Organization, 50 million people suffer with epilepsy worldwide. Next slide, please. This is a picture of me with Charlotte Figgy, the little girl in Colorado, USA, who had to plant Charlotte's web named after her. Charlotte's parents told me that they had tried every anti-epileptic drug there was. They didn't stop the seizures and cause damage to Charlotte's brain and body, even causing her heart to stop at times. CBD stopped the seizures immediately without any negative side effects. Her parents told me, even if this didn't stop the seizures, we would never stop giving CBD to her because of the other ways it has benefited her mind and body. Next slide, please. This is Dr. Blair, who we have on our staff in the USA. He has been using our CBD oil with his patients as well as conducting other research. And the reports we get back from him are very promising. Here are some examples. Next slide, please. Dr. Gravely is an 83-year-old retired man as an astronaut from the USA. Next slide, please. A 68-year-old female from the USA with psoriatic arthritis. An 82-year-old male with dementia, PTSD, and diabetes. In the next slide and improved social interactivity, strength, energy, reduced tumours, and improved cognition. In the next slide, a 59-year-old female from the USA with pain and cigarette addiction. Next slide, please. Helping someone to defeat a cigarette addiction may sound hard to believe, yet new, randomised, placebo-controlled, double-blind human research from London has proven that CBD does lessen the addictive craving and anxiety that usually makes quitting so difficult. The results were clearly evident by the end of the first week. The scientist of this study concluded, CBD is a potential treatment for nicotine addiction. It is interesting to note that a synthetic cannabinoid was also trialled for overcoming nicotine addiction, and it started working. However, it had to be discontinued due to causing depression and suicide in the test subjects. Next slide, please. Genius inventor Thomas Edison summed it up well when he said, there were never so many able active minds at work on the problems of disease as now, and all their discoveries are tending towards a simple truth that you cannot improve on nature. Next slide, please. So, CBD from the real plant seems to be very safe very effective, yet some authorities are saying it is not. Next slide. If you watch television in Australia, someone from the government or medical establishment will appear and repeat the same three claims. We don't know if it's safe. We don't know if it works. There's no science to support it. Are those claims true? Next slide, please. As some of you may know, the US government holds two patents on using CBD as a medicine. In their research, the government scientists concluded no signs of toxicity or serious side effects have been observed following chronic administration of CBD. Next slide. 
And this, CBD, is an anti-epileptic and anti-anxiety. The absence of side effects allows very high doses to be used. Slide. And this, CBD is not toxic even when chronically administered to humans or given in large acute doses. Slide, please. Dr. Lester Grinspoon of Harvard University began studying cannabis in 1967 to explore the supposed dangers. He came to the conclusion that misinformed and misled. Next slide, please. Beer, please. In contrast to this, every year the number of deaths due to consuming alcohol is 3.3 million. Next slide, please. Cigarettes. Cigarettes give 6 million deaths. That's one person dying every five years. These two legal drugs kill the equivalent to the double the entire population of Sydney, Australia every single year. Next slide, please, with the risk of death in Europe. This chart contains data from multiple European groups to show what people are actually dying from and how many people are dying from each different cause. As expected, cigarettes and alcohol are major causes of death, but have a look at what the biggest causes are. Slide. The number one cause of death in Europe is click preventable medical injuries in hospitals. Next down the list is click pharmaceutical drug side effects. Way down the bottom beneath click being struck by lightning is click dietary supplements and click herbal remedies. So, we're being told that to trust hospitals and prescription medicines. Click. The number one cause of death in the Western world. And we should fear hemp. Click. Which has not killed anyone in 5,000 years of unsupervised use. I don't understand this message. Perhaps some someone can explain it to me. So, if CBD is so safe and effective, on this next slide, why such opposition by the medical establishment? Next slide. The two drugs that make the most money for drug companies are click pain and mood disorders. Now consider the most well-researched and understood properties of CBD are click relief from pain, anxiety and depression. In this chart, in the next slide, lists the use, side effects and mode of action of the world's top 10 selling drug. Most of the world's top selling drugs act by targeting a cell receptor known as a G-protein coupled receptor, listed it as GPCR in the chart. In fact, 40% of all the pharmaceutical drugs in the world work by targeting the G-protein receptor. Next slide, please. So, if G-protein receptors are where the money is, where are the most prevalent G-protein receptors in the human body? In his article, The Endocannabinoid System as it relates to autism, Dr. Bogner says cannabinoid receptors are the most prevalent of any G-protein coupled receptor. They're the, the only ones to play a direct role in virtually every aspect of the human body. Next slide, please. So, to summarise, putting all this together, modern medicine makes most of its money from drugs that target epinoid receptors. Click. The side effects of these drugs are a leading cause of death in Western countries. Click. Cannabinoids from hemp activate these same receptors without causing harm. Click. Drug companies stand to lose 80 billion dollars in profits each year if people stopped buying their drugs. Next slide please. The good news is that him is really breaking down the walls of persecution and the public is finally starting to learn the truth. Next slide please. Me and it filled. I believe the evidence is clear. Cannabinoids from industrial hemp are safe and highly beneficial. And I think we have barely scratched the surface of what health benefits this plant can offer us. So far, we haven't even been discussing CBD, 
and as you know, there are many other cannabinoids worth investigating. We are interested in working with other companies to make our quality cannabinoid extracts available to as many people as possible, and believe now is the perfect time to be getting involved with the rapidly developing CB industry. Next slide, please. Branding product line includes powders, capsules, tinctures, and other airless natural delivery devices. Next slide, please. As well as various grades and concentrations of standards bulk CBD oil and water label products, we have a number of research and development projects underway in the USA, Australia, and Europe. Next slide, please. Come visit us at a trade show near you or at our headquarters in Boulder, or Boulder, Colorado, USA. Final slide, please. I hope you found this information interesting and useful, and that this might just be the start of your interest in CBD and other cannabinoids from him. Thank you for listening. Please contact us at elixinol.com for a copy of this presentation or any questions. So, what Enjoy is... the World Hemp Conference the beginning. Thank you very much, Paul. Greetings <laughs> in Australia already. I will uh, take word to the uh, audience. Audience, some questions for Paul? Yes. Enjoy the World Hemp Conference. This is Sorry that I cannot hear you very well. 
very hard for me to hear your question. Would, when people stop buying pharmaceutical drugs, indirectly have a positive impact on the forests and biodiversity where these plants come from? Okay. Uh, well, when people stop buying pharmaceutical drugs, I think it will have a very positive effect on many things, including being uh, biodiversity and where natural plants grow. Um, my concern is that the, um, if we stop buying pharmaceutical drugs, the pharmaceutical companies won't just stop doing anything. Um, so it depends on their reaction to what they do. I'm hoping that the pharmaceutical companies, with all their power and their many billions of dollars or trillions of dollars in the world, will invest in supporting sustainable plant based medicines and see the sense in that. But that is my idea of this deep view. Well, within that idea, we, we, will, we will see. Rather than stop pharmaceutical medicines, I prefer people focus more on the positive or focus more on creating these biodiverse landscapes and sustainable agriculture and using plants as medicine as we have for many thousands of years. And remember that this works often without much less side effects than the pharmaceutical medicines that exist today. So, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, audience, don't have any questions anymore for you because you are so great and you tell anything and, uh, yeah, uh, we think about it. We must uh, work uh, cooperative co so that the uh, world will go faster to the other side. Uh, of course. Paul, we expect you next year in Slovenia. <laughs> and that you will be part of World Health Congress. I next year where it's yet. That you will be part of World Health Congress live. And now, uh, greetings in Australia and be very well. Bye bye, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you.